Good morning. You're welcome to this information about me and my family and how we're the beginning of strength in this society after they tried to kill us. And now, for the first time of ever, we're going to let you all know what has happened and we do not want to feel ashamed, we just want to bring this out so we can have some calm and peace in our lives. And I'll try to assist you, yeah? May I? Yes, this is my mother speaking and I trust her very much. Okay, I'll show myself just for the record and then I'll go into the background. So, dear beloved Rose, our life has been very hard and I'm very grateful for your support through it. You have had, you have been marvellous support. You have been simply the best in our hard life. And uh, I'll just try to summarise all these terrible things today so we can get them out of our life. So please don't get emotional and we'll just get through it sort of mm. without trying to get emotion to it. Mm. We'll just mention and uh, <clears throat> deliver the information to the states that have been involved in this systemic crime towards children and young teenagers and young women, young fertile women, which you have been. So I have been taking uh, <clears throat> your report before earlier and I will just summarize and you will just comment on it mm -hmm. what you would like to. So you have uh, described many systemic crimes that have happened to you in different countries and um, you started talking about how even the fact of your birth was hard as you came into the family where your sister was ill, child. Uh, already when you came, you came into a family where there was a sick child. When you were born, you were born into a sick child family. And that had to do that you were born in uh, 1989, in January. And your sister was born in 1987 summer, which is a year after Chernobyl, and you were born in Riga, Latvia, uh, Ventspils. Ventspils, rather, in Latvia you were born on, on the coast of the most radioactive sea in the world, in Ventspils. And uh, <clears throat> your mother, that is me, was pregnant through those times when it was very radioactive after Chernobyl. And your sister had a tumor, and she was in. A, she was operated later for that as a child at three years, and we were in extreme distress. And you, as a child, suffered from that a lot, of course. And then you were mentioning also <coughs> that um, Latvia, the country where you were born, should have helped your family with this, but there was no help at all, which you then <coughs> make a play on the Latvian country, um, accusing it for no support for your family in this case. Is it so? I didn't hear the last sentence. Uh, you, you accuse Latvia for not helping uh, your family in such a distressful situation. Well, one thing I found miraculously is that, I, and, I to, and I'm saying that in a sarcastic way, is how, how only 10% of the Latvian population can be happy and vivid throughout 20 years of experience of the Soviet where we should not criminalize human persons and I feel as if I was criminalized. First of all, the accidents happened of Chernobyl, which gave the whole area of North Europe the 
sickness of radiation, which should have been brought up as the, one of the most the biggest crime. Yeah, towards towards the childhood of of, of newborns. Of, yeah, and, and even infertility. So you were at least lucky to be born. But but this is a terrible crime. You you so rightfully say. And uh, <clears throat> I have just put there that you were mentioning here also uh, that your grandfathers died very young uh, for their age because they were not getting uh, their tr illnesses treated then yeah. and yeah. having no support from Latvia. And. Um, and your mother, your sister was having, who was very ill, could not be cured in Latvia. No, she had no chance of survival in Latvia. She had to go away to Sweden to be cured, where, which in Sweden was the only, which in Sweden was the only sustainable medical help that the world could offer after that came other new medicine, but even in Gothenburg the, the medicine broke down after a G8 meeting, after Russia's involvement in the politics. Nevertheless, Latvia couldn't help save your sister, so um, your mother fixed the treatment in Sweden. Yeah. And the whole family had to move away from the, their from family. our beloved country, yeah. from our magical, spiritual love, where we were born in this country, where we were given beauty, health, water. The Latvians have a beautiful celebrational song, which is sung in the revolutionary days after Soviet disappeared from Latvia. And the, and, the, and the song is about what will the children drink now? Will it be the death, will it be the water of life or the water of death? And this is what we have to maintain as one of the biggest and, uh, questions of life. What will it be? Will it always be like this, horrible for people to survive? So, um, you, this is something then that you accuse Belarusia for uh, having the Chernobyl accident, I guess. Who could have ever let so many stupid idiots work at one of the most dangerous facilities in the world. And after that, there was a whole blackout in the whole Russian society. There was a brainwash. Nobody remembered what had happened. The whole Russian society was brainwashed. Anyway, it is um, a planned act, that, that uh, catastrophe. Well, it wasn't meant by God. And it destroyed so we, we have still to have to remain calm when we say planned act, because usually planned is only meant by God. But see, there have been deceitful men and women in these Satan, natures. Satan has had powers too, you know. In these natures, where we have been deceived into believing that planned can also be by God's hand, but this has also been destroyed by the only and only a human man. Because they men are the most vicious creatures of this whole land. They are manipulated by the darkness. Yeah. So, uh, then you mention here, I have put notes, uh, that you, were, uh, you have been indeed distressed in the foreign country, Sweden, where you had to emigrate to save your sister and you couldn't be with your kin, with your family, with your roots. Yes, I have a huge family here. I have many siblings, I have many 
many ch children to play with, but it was all destroyed. Once I come back, it was always a question of what has happened, what is happening, what is wrong, what is right. There was never this calm which others have maintained in their life. In their tribe, yeah. yeah. So you were a lonely child with your sister and your mother because your father left the family later. So, and you had to learn foreign language that uh, was very hard too. No, for me it wasn't difficult because I have intelligence. Uh, yeah, but you never, you never could use your mother tongue. Uh, you yeah, for me it was difficult. My mother never took, teach me even the Latvian alphabet and I never actually had any of such interests. Nice. You didn't have time, it's just, uh, yeah. you had to go to kindergarten and you had to sort of, your mother had to survive to, alone with children, it was very tough. Yeah. And, uh, and then you had to go to um, child care where uh, there were many immigrants. You, it yeah. was not just Swedish. It was not just Swedish, which was weird, which is always around me. It was always immigrants, always the... The, always the, the whole magnitude of power was always focused about immigrants. It was never about my own country, about the Swedish country, about the nature and such things that interested me. It was always about war and how racist and like what we've done wrong in my country and what I could have done wrong. And life was never ever as it was. It was a brainwash. And it's the technology that is being used. And many is dying because of it. And many is hurt because of it. And many leave their families because of it. There seemed to be nothing in reality anymore. Yeah. Yeah, so... so <clears throat> Then uh, there is this fact that the area that might have contaminated and made people ill was also this Baltic Sea that made your sister definitely ill out of Chernobyl. Uh, the contamination there might have come from uh, Nova Zemla, that is Russia, because in the 60s they had these atomic bomb tests. So, Baltic Sea is mainly radioactive, not for Chernobyl, but from atomic tests in the 60s, 70s, which, big czar bomb, that was the biggest yeah, atomic biggest bomb atomic in, in, the world. Bomb in the world. And it just drained down into the Baltic Sea, and, uh, so, so, and Sweden too. In the middle of Sweden there is... Because everybody notices something is wrong with the skies, with the trees, it's dirty, the water is polluted, the magic is gone, the air is unbreathable. It is something that is wrong. So the food, even the Swedish food is contaminated because it grows in the middle of cent the central Sweden, the enormous yeah. area that is yeah. polluted with radiation yeah. too. And uh, it is not test being tested for us. So, so, and that can get any disease. You can get any disease from those radioactive things. So, so actually, even um, European Union is not taking care of the food in the European Union. It is not protecting the food from radioactive substances. I didn't hear. I was focused. Uh, European yeah. Union, uh, Brussels, uh, you know, and all yeah. these institutions—they they don't control food for us, which which is a criminal act. They don't control food well. It's well, it's only been this past year I've seen uh, after the presidential of Latvia in the European Union, I saw a big change in the, the Riga city. There was new restaurants opened, and it was with quality food, not just with shit food, where you can only shit from it. Mm -hmm. And it was nutritious, it was healthy, 
it was actually quite enjoyable and it was a quality that was missed in a city as beautiful as Riga where quality used to be something that was so highly appreciated. But still they don't check radiation in all foods and it doesn't smell, you know. Mm -hmm. You can't see it properly. Which... Um... Labian. Arthur's. Jano. Labi. No, it's not so nice, it's just a bit like, yeah? Nu jā, bet es varēšu tikai pēc divām stundām kaut kur. Nu, es vēl nedomāju. Jā, es uzvanīšu. Bet es esmu ļoti aizņemta teikt, lūdzu atvainojies, lūdzu, man jānaliek klausu. Čau, čau! So then um, you mentioned back to Sweden. So this uh, your own childhood mm -hmm. in the city where there is no nature, where there are no resources, where there is no your, not, none of your native people or your kin that you you would be able to grow up with with your native culture. You are ripped off and put into this city where you are have to go to school all day long. You are away from your mother, even from your father. Tough, very tough, very hard, really. So, but you had good friends there, yeah. You had good. I was always loved because I have an energy which is undescribable to other people. People get happy from me because I have this love in my eyes and my energy, my my lifehood, my energy which is the energy of life is created throughout the sun and and so therefore people get warm and loving from me and I have never actually experienced the hate that so many speaks of, of this country and I was quite uh, uh, shocked to hear about that there could actually be hate because I in my own world had never experienced it except of all of the dealment with hate, aggression and secrecy in coming in, and involving itself in the life. So, yes. Okay, so, so it was not easy to grow up, up uh, alone with a, a sick sister. No, but it was and never a lonely, hard as well, but there and, was and, not and so a, much a lonely love. Mother, a lonely mother. Sister was not as she was supposed to be. She exactly. was she was ill. She was ill and she all had the time. and she had her difficulties. And you were worried about her all the time. Were I? Of course. Yeah, well I always wanted to help and I wanted her to take her syringe and always take her medicine and when she started to get epileptical seizures I started to get very scared. Yeah. And I still had to go to school and I was quite shocked at that time. Why am I in school? Why am I next to my sister? But of course there was something about not being allowed to be near by her because of the fear of death and that evil can come and ruin the good fear of death. Yes. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> there was always lack of resources. There was never enough resources. We were sort of, there was poverty all the time, sort of, yeah. Was not yeah, there was always something that was missing. 
I was never allowed to have more than two pair of shoes. I was never allowed to have more than two or three dresses. No money to go to Latvia. Yeah, no, no way of having a week's break from the school or such. There was, it was always about Sweden, about staying in Sweden, not allowed to go to Sweden, uh, your, to Latvia. And your father didn't have, couldn't afford to meet you either. He didn't yeah, have enough money. because nobody here gave him money and my father is a very intelligent man. I've seen those people who studied in the same school as him. They've already been millionaires and my father has only his apartment which he got. It's Luckily. obviously, obviously Luckily. some kind of conspiration against my family and it feels as if they, those who conspired were the ones who were to win because they had some kind of hate inside of them. And uh, how was your, uh, your teenage years? It was... Um... It was difficult because in Sweden there is a law that once you turn 15, you're allowed to have sex. And once I turned 15, I became as a lamb. The wolf started running around me and I became the lamb that nobody saved. And I had to deal with all kinds of mysteries about how my head was seducted and Every weekend I was out of the house, never, never, never had I any understandment. All I had was my best friend of mother and I, it was, and even that, the social services destroyed by, by making it, by making it illegal to smoke. And I, one thing I found in my life very interesting was to have a bit of calm with a cigarette and to just feel the breath of my soul. And nobody understood this because everybody criminalized cigarettes. But cigarettes are actually not harmful if nobody puts chemicals in them or rat poison, which is also very deadly for human beings. Anyway, yes. uh, everybody in school smoked, yeah? Some no, girls. not everybody, but the 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 nasty girls smoked. Majority cigarettes. of girls the, smoked. The nasty girls, the immigrants, the hookers uh, smoked. And I had to go out and smoke with them because they always wanted to be friends with me because I always dressed so beautifully, was so kind and so... and they knew that they could trick me with their attitude. And there was lots of alcohol too, yeah? Always involved alcohol. I want, my favorite thing to drink was Coca-Cola and apple seed juice or any kind of juice, like kiwi juice or grapefruit juice or... Uh, and nobody uses I, any. I, ice milkshake, milkshake was my favorite. Nobody even had the had it as an opportunity on the list of on the list of liquids. Liquids, yeah. It was just coffee, tea, or Coca Cola, Sprite, Fanta. It was not even a, even something to choose from. And you have to say, in your kin, in your family, nobody smokes or drinks. No, my grandfather smoked cigarettes. Oh, yeah, yeah, your grandfather, but you hardly met him. But I mean, in but your, still, your father... But I still, I never felt it was dangerous. And I always enjoyed smoking cigarettes because I found it to be healthy. For me, it was health. For me, I could see I'm breathing, I'm feeling fine. But then other people started saying, you will get cancer from that, you will die from that, you're a criminal because you smoke. It was just like everything started to become, everything I do was a robot that was watching me doing it. Well, what do you, why do you think 
your family, your mother, your father, sister, never smoked or drank. Why do you think you sort of happen, I, happen to slide I, into this? Because, my, because other parts of my relatives smoked, which I liked. My father's cousin's wife smoked, and this was how I first took and smoked a cigarette. I took, we used to be in the forest, and I just took a little cigarette that was already smoked from and went to the fire, lit it up and smoked and it was just fine. But but her she her her grand ancestor died from lung cancer. So there is obviously something that is very mysterious around my family. Always wanting me to become pushing into these searches of and, and sickness. So the thing is that uh, you were telling people not to use drugs, huh? Yes, I was. But people didn't listen, yeah? No, they never listened. And they didn't help to stop by them. No, and the, and the more and more, the, the older I grew, the more and more the victim I became in the struggle of finding good friends that did not use drugs. Okay, and uh, but before this uh, heavy stuff started, you were a happy, very powerful uh, young woman. You were working and studying and you went into high school, yeah? Yeah. You finished uh, the college yeah. with good degrees and yeah. you went into the high school. Yeah. No, high school is from nine, no, from 10 to 12. But I went to an international to university. college. To university you went. Yeah. And uh, you studied international college. economics. No, I did not study economics, so international relations. I international studied. relations. But they have economics also. No, but with but globalization and with the with the the main main area of focus on nature's survival. On the environment, yeah. 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 So and then you had uh, before you finished uh, high school, you were one summer working in Latvian ministry. No, I finished high school and that summer I went and worked for the health, not for the health ministry, but the... For the welfare ministry, yeah? Yeah, welfare ministry, where I, where I was the main organizer between the immigrants that had left Latvia. It was re-immigration program yeah, for was, yeah. wealth ministry. Yeah. And you were the responsible person of that group. Yeah. And you worked there for more than a month, yeah? Yeah, I worked there for a month. And you met the Prime Minister of Latvia. Yeah, sort I of met the Prime proud Minister. Proud for doing this yeah. project that you yeah. helped to arrange. Yeah. So there is a great record in um, Latvian states, archives, that you were doing perfect job. You were in the ministry for months mm -hmm. and you were in good health. You have been studying and when you were studying in Sweden you were even working there uh, simultaneously because... Uh, yeah, I, mean, I often had a job. I never was without money or anything because Sweden is quite expensive and especially Stockholm and if you want to have fun there you have to at least have 10,000 of crumbs and this... The, months, yeah. the, so, so the society only gives 1,000 crowns for children under 18, so it was quite hard to survive because I never got any money from my mother or father. Mm, it's not true, but, but you, know, I you needed more yeah. for your lifestyle. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, the thing is that you had jobs, but you then chose a well-paid job for Norway, yeah? 
I, uh, first of all, I chose a well-paid job in a restaurant where I really enjoyed working and I was feeling very happy. But the amount of money for the job that was required was too little because I often hear about people who, have, who earn hundreds of thousands of crumbs by just sitting in their chair and looking in the computer. And I had to work for at least two months in a very stressful job where my, where my uh, attention was needed all the time until half past three in the night. And after half past three I had to go and celebrate with other people that you, the day was done. But I, I am more of a calm person, I am more of a nature person. I do not want to celebrate as much as other people. I, I just want to dance. I'm a dancing person. Oh, you're a dancing queen. Yeah. You have been such a dancing star. Yeah. You were champion in the yeah. rhythmic gymnastics in Sweden. Yeah, but also there it was a bit just like, also with immigrants and never allowed to be a, with Swedish persons, because it seems to be that it is just like they don't like me. But there are people that like me. Yeah, you didn't have your pin. Yeah. You had to grow up without it. That is a yeah. really criminal thing. Yeah. Systemical, systemical crime of losing your tribe that protects you and loves you and cherishes you. Yeah. But anyway, you were fabulous. You, you, you became a star of rhythmic gymnastics and, yeah. and dancing. And you were a group uh, gymnasts who mm -hmm. won uh, in uh, Malmö or Lund, where was that? In, in Malmö. Malmö. Malmö, yeah. And it was with ball and with... with I don't remember actually. I think it was... Uh, I think it was... I don't remember which it was. I do you remember which it was. Was I think it ball? Was, a ball was it ball yeah. or was it uh, or was it Latinauk? Auk, Latinauk. Kisses be, kisses be. Jumping line, jumping line. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, know what the name of it. You know. Which yeah, yeah. You had right? both. There were several performances. There were several. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember actually. Yeah, you were something like twelve then. Yeah. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, it was very impressive. You did such hard work as a child to get there. Yeah. Um, but but your uh, trainer loved you very much. You were her favorite. Yes, she was always Sophia. helpful. Always helpful. Yeah, she didn't have children herself, so she <laughs> she really yeah. adored you. Okay, and. Uh, <clears throat> And then you tried to get back to Latvia. When I moved back to Latvia, when Christopher brought me on his hands to Latvia, then you also followed here to Latvia. Mm -hmm. And then the thing hit us because it, the Latvian country had liberalized drugs on every corner of Riga. They were selling terrible but stuff. But I was quite lucky about that because I needed to forget that I had been raped because after I get raped I always think very horrible thoughts about it and it was I needed to get out of that horrible rape thought because and that drug that was selling on the streets which was legal helped me to not focus on rapists it helped me to focus on just who I am and how I take one day at the time and surviving with my own energy. Okay, that was in Norway where you got raped. Right? Yeah. And, but there was something else you said about Norway. You said that uh, you worked there in a hotel in the mountains yeah. for 
more than half a year yeah. going to job from 6.30 in the morning until 3 o'clock yeah. every day. But you said that you were totally alone there without any Latvians. And... Yeah, there was nobody there. There was just gay people and they were all awful, unintelligent. And they were just like, ugh, something new. Like everybody wanted to get famous and ugh, it was just like, ugh, had to, so had to be friends with them just to have a friend, you know. So this is such a synthetic culture. Yeah, it was just, uh, it was... It was, it was like a glass, you know, it's easy to crush if you don't like it, and that's what they did. Because it's, it's on, it's on, it's not, it's not possible to have a relationship, a friendly relationship, if there is actual people you don't like. I mean, it's, and to be stumped at Iaksha, it's in Adyaksha. Driven into it, yeah. yeah. And, you, and you said also that you had this enormous salary in Norway, but you had also this uh, lonely trap, loneliness trap there, yeah. You were very lonely there. Yeah. And... Uh, and... Uh, <coughs> they were using drugs too, yeah. Yeah, they were. But I wasn't uh, using drugs there. In Norway, I never used drugs. I maybe smoked marijuana two weeks of the time. And I was there for five, six months. Anyway, they got you started there. They did. No, they never did. And... Uh... So, but then we were coming back to Latvia, back to roots. We thought, here we will regain our health. We will put the country up. We will save La poor Latvia that was having a crisis. No, I was never I thinking. Was, I was yeah, doing that. she was thinking that. Yeah, and, and you wanted to find a job here in Latvia. And you, I remember you wanted to have, um, to work with kids in the kindergarten. Yeah, here in Latvia I could do it because... I do you love I, kids? Yeah, I have this talent with children. They love me. They see me as a fairy or a godmother or an angel because I have blonde and a beautiful smile and blue eyes. It seems to be very innocent for children. They feel safe and that they can open up and so further. And you wanted really to work. You were so willing, I remember, to work with kids. But then you started looking for jobs and there were no jobs. No, but they have told me that already for 20 years, that there are no jobs in Latvia. It's just horrible. Yeah. The whole job market is totally destroyed yeah. here. And that was done by the banking system. That was Swedish banks that took over Latvian banks and uh, just destroyed the market. So here we accuse uh, the Swedish banking cartel and... Uh, Latvian government has been impotent to to hold Latvian country sovereign, which has really sort of destroyed your chances. And At I least I think you know it's time for the government to understand that they are they have misused the power, which is all often said in the books of history. Yeah. If you misuse the power, you will not lead the people to its rightful and judgeful faith. You will mislead them and you will kill the, what is left of peace and eternity in this world. And if you of the government will not lead your persons into the straightful judgment of act, you will mislead your people into death and this is what is happening around here. Nothing is being done. No streets have been decorated. The only thing they put some money on, which they are really using for ages, they've misused the power of decoration and they're misusing its use as well. It's just ugly. It's just like Obviously, it's something wrong here, like no house has been renovated, everything is dirty, everything is disgusting, 
nothing happens here. What what is this kind of politics? If they and, and all the relatives run abroad, sort of uh, all young people run abroad. So your your sort of best uh, generation mates, they are all running around away from here. It's just horrible for you too. Yeah, everybody is leaving Latvia and. No, it's not horrible for me. I understand where they live. I never wanted to return. But after all of those rapes, I was... I was sick with uh, something. Okay. And, and the, of course, there's and no then, medical help here as well. And then, you, you, then we come to the phase where you collapsed and got really ill. When you came to Latvia, you just collapsed here. Yeah. You just totally got ill. Well, it, I was about 21 then. I had gone through maybe two abortions, I think. Yeah, two abortions. Many men that had wanted me. Everything was a fight about money. Everything was about just money. Nothing of true value. No Johnson's no life. chance that would no. be valuable. There was nothing to survive for. There was nothing to strive for. There was nothing. There was nothing. It was just so disgusting. This world. And uh, <clears throat> then, then it was really all this uh, health system that there was uh, the health system was terrible. The hospitals and, and um, yeah, that's where we entered the hospital phase where, where there was so much suffering yeah, and so yeah. much poverty. And there was just Soviet, Soviet people. There was no government. There was no, nothing of correctness. Nothing was correct there. There was and I had to subside because they used language against me, they used violence against me, they used drugs against me, they used aggressiveness against me. There was, they even sat at me, they tied me up and syringed me with what they call, you, this medicine gives you side effects and this medicine will take away the side effects but in the end it is both poisons they didn't create nothing for the human persons to survive and, they were and no that was feelable it was uh, just feelable it was it was just death everywhere and on the streets of Riga it's just death I don't know how they survive in this country. It's a goddamned country and it's not beautiful anymore. Somebody's destroyed it and not been happy about it. And they have not solved the questions that have gone to be solved. And somebody's living its happy life with its happy life. And there are no rehabs for young people at all. There are no, no Everybody, here of it. Every stupid person is rich in this country and they get money I don't know how because they don't tell me because I'm Swedish and they know that we do not like corruption. And then something wonderful happened to you. Uh, your mother made you free of drugs. Yes, it was quite nice, yes. So, so, I, so I saved you and you got free of drugs. Yeah. I just took you and cherished you for months and you were free of them. And uh, then something even more beautiful happened to you. You got pregnant. Yeah, yeah. And, you, was, and you were because, so... Because this was the time where I felt I... All of my dreams had been lost. And all of my most precious gifts of life had been taken away and this was the time where I was to love again and I wanted to leave the society I was never coming back again I was gonna live in the nature with my child 
and never come back again because it was so horrible. But then of course they had to start bringing me back. Even though I did everything perfectly, everything perfectly, they had to bring me back into this horrible society okay, where calm everything down. is horrible. Calm down. It's too bit too much now, huh? So I will just tell, you can calm down now, okay? You don't have to speak. So you can have a rest a bit. So, I so, want to go and have a cigarette. Can we make a pause? Uh, it's not much left. Here. No, we make a pause now. You will. We have very. No, pause. we make a pause now. You have to start listening to me. Okay. You do give her money, don't you? You gave her 15 euros, she said, or you said. Uh, yeah, maybe it was 15 euros. Yeah. And then you give her 40 euros sometimes and what not. Well, I I, I, in the past I've given her money to, to buy food and survive, you know, because you can't really survive on, on yeah. that period. Yeah, yeah, but, but you have to because she is a drug addict and she's I psychiatrically she ill. Addict. She is buying marijuana, Chris. I just saw her ordering it on the phone. Well, to be honest with you, Suzanne, I don't know what, I, I mean, I, I, you know, we can talk as long as we like about all of this, but I, I have sort of done my best with her. You know, I've looked after her for six months now, given her... No, you haven't done your best. You haven't been with drug specialists and haven't listened to their suggestions. What they say, I have, and that is to give little portions of money that are just enough for the food every day. Well, then you have to, well, then I don't know, you have to deal with it. She's never been at the, on any drugs as long as I've been She has okay. started okay. using okay. drugs while you are, have taken care of her now. No, she hasn't had done any drugs since I've been at She's place. using marijuana. So anyway, can you please, can you please, can you please give her money for a day from this no, time on? I can't do that. I'm going to have to stop giving her money altogether soon because I don't have, I can't continue to support her separate from me. I mean, she could live in the same house with me and eat the same food as me and all that, but I can't support to look after her at the moment until the house sells. I mean, you know, I'm sort of run out of money basically. No, but we all are. We all are now run out of money situation. Okay. Well, then she only has one. As far as I'm concerned, the only choice she has is to come and kind live of with me again. But if she's not going to take that, if she decides not to, because she thinks I'm going to fuck her. And you, and you really That's think? So, so you have taken that house in your mouth? Uh, yeah, yeah. You have already signed. But Chris, I begged you not to take that time. Well, I mean, what's too bad? I mean, I don't see what, what the problem is. It's only like the Irish Sea, and I've lived near the Irish Sea. I mean, I enjoy the Irish Sea, and I enjoy the Baltic Sea, and the, and the, and the, and the goodness that I've heard out of there. It's just it's tremendous. I mean, I enjoy it. But it's But this is all about you, Chris. But if you, if you have taken responsibilities on Rose, she, she she would have to be there all the time. She doesn't go away to England or France. Yeah, no, she was going to go with them away to England and France. That's all she wants. But if she doesn't, then she has to be at that radioactive sea all the time. Well, she could come and meet her. She doesn't have to. She could come and meet her to France and to England. This is how you talk to me all the time, too. It's just being your pet or, or dying. And she, you take somewhere else the, the place to live. Can you can you start hearing what I talk to you, Chris? I know what you said, but you're wrong. There's a slightly elevated chance of getting cancer, okay? Which is maybe like double. But doesn't doesn't she have enough of diseases? She gets much more problems associated with all of this by the smoking that she does. I mean, the smoking has increased the chance. 
Okay, so so it's it's just as usual. You, Christopher does as he pleases. Totally unimpactable. Sorry, Chris. This is the way you 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 can legitimize your expertise, and uh, you you should start talking about that people who don't have a point of view, calling themselves experts, are immature to give expertise title to be given it expert title because they can't see right from wrong. What? How can that be an expert? About the, your, you losing your expert title in England. Okay. Well, I lost my expert title in England because I was winning the case. That's what happened there. They took my title. Yeah, yeah, but they told that you are you you can't be expert because you're an activist. But that's because you know you you can't tell what is wrong and what is right. You suppose not to. No, but that's why you don't get jobs in the United States either. Well, I don't, but yeah, I know that. But frankly, you know, I'm sick to death of all that working in the United States. Yeah, but I'm telling you that, that, that this is where you show why that is the only right way through this indigenous court, where you are both a witness well, and an yeah, analyst but, yeah, but and but, judge. I just had a strange person come into the office. No, I look like a KGB agent. Oh. God, Chris, we have been through such hell dealing with everybody on the front line. Can you be cooperative? Can you be cooperative? If you are putting effort in getting some place to live, can you get a place to live that, that is not a place where we would never go to visit you? Basta. You can, you can, you can go to Baltic Sea without living at the Baltic Sea, can't you? Okay, I have to go on. I'm 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 I
Nē, nē, vēl nevajag spiest neko. Jā. Es vienīšu uz haudzīti. Payback time. Mm -hmm. The Queen of Levy. 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 Mm -hmm. So, dear Ruth, thanks so much for being so brave and courageous for, of uh, putting forward your hard experiences here. In life. You are very strong. Very strong you are. So now we come to much closer painful things. But let's try to talk about them without feeling them. Yeah? times of health. You had Richard in your life? No, he was never loved. He was just somebody there. But nevertheless, he was always there. No, while. he was a jerk. He was too young. He was not educated. He was not intelligent. All he wanted was to have a rich girlfriend that was beautiful. Yeah. And, um, so, uh, but you did love him. Yeah. No, I did not love him. And he was really caring about you a lot, too. No, he wasn't. Why are you changing this uh, subject into something that I do not want to speak of? And the beautiful baby came out of that. No, you have it all wrong. If my story was to be told perfectly, you are wrong now. There was no perfect love there. Yeah. Anyway. So... You are getting me confused. Sorry. Sorry. But we are getting into your um, pregnancy, yeah? Because it was a wonderful time in your life. Yeah. Because I was without anybody that made me unhappy. Yeah, that's right. Because he left you when you got pregnant and... Uh, you had yourself with the baby growing in your beautifully. And you were powerful 
You were really beautiful. So beautiful you were. And uh, I had the pleasure of helping you through pregnancy. It was a magical time. We were taking care of each other. And uh, <clears throat> you were so good, you never smoke a cigarette through whole pregnancy. You were really taking care of the baby. Eating well and vitamins and ferrum. Yeah, that I liked the most because once when I was little I tasted my own blood and I tasted of iron and ferrum is a medicine that gives the blood iron so I felt really well and I felt that it was necessary for the body and it is so that if you have two little levels of iron in your blood you can die in pregnancy, at least in Sweden. So, and... Um, but so, uh, we managed to go and do uh, health uh, inspections and everything, everything was going fine. But uh, to give the best chance for the child, you even uh, stopped taking uh, calming uh, medicine. So you, you really no, I had sacrifice herbal. for the baby. I believe in herbal medicine, but now I have subsided into chemicals because I got really ill and I saw the illness that is threatening the city. It's not like in Sweden where the air is not polluted. Here in Riga, the air is polluted, and it was a fragrance of sickness in the air, now this winter at least. So, <clears throat> so we went uh, to prepare everything for birth of the baby. We were going to health services to prepare the birth, which is very responsible, big event to get a healthy child and you to have a good labour. And uh, we were getting the best help there was in Stockholm. But uh, unfortunately it was very feminist experience. There were only women there where we were going and uh, they were obviously gathering the data also to later steal the baby because they brought in social services too late. They, were, they never gave us, a, though we were in contact with them already in the fourth month of your... And um, it was all sort of planned for stealth of the baby. It was really scary to see how they turned their uh, attitude away. First they were so kind to you, so nice and so sort of understanding. And then suddenly they turned into cold, 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 soulful, soulless creatures who just planned for take of a child. So uh, the, the first time we met social services was with them, with those health people, and uh, the woman said directly. She was a lesbian as well. Yeah, uh, and she said directly, you will not get the child, she said to me. Yeah. Though she didn't haven't even looked at my sort of... And, and they spoke to me didn't 20 minutes me. just to tell me that they're going to take away my child from me. And that was the first 20 minutes they visited me. They had never even seen me before. Yeah. This was just unbelievable what yeah. happened there. It, we were totally shocked. And... Um, 
it was like that from that on. It was just worse and worse, really. We met something that was not from our world. It was... And, and, and then there was one more event, that when you were ill, uh, behaving, when you were a teenager, I... I uh, no, when you were a child, even, you and your sister, you were uh, in Gothenburg, you were going for psychology tests when you were 10 and your sister was 12. And the psychology tests were about uh, why you are uh, quarreling so much, you and your sister. Remember? But we were never for quarreling. Half a year. For half a year. And uh, after that test they told me that you and your sister should never live together in the same apartment, in the same family. Remember? And they didn't say why. It was very sick too. And they are health specialists. And they never tried to sort it out or help. They just said that it was not good for you and your but sister. But we never quarreled. We, we had quarrels in the bathtub. Who was going to be Mickey Mouse or Tom? Yeah. We were just playing. It was very strange. And then when I was having trouble with you drinking and, 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 and smoking as a teenager, yeah. social services just, uh, just uh, made you live at some other places and didn't give you any help or support. Didn't at all. There was no help or support, practically. No, no sort of guidance, no... no incompetent system and they blamed just me they were not trying to help the teenager who was in trouble alone without father it was terrible really and uh, <clears throat> when you were pregnant there were no rehabs uh, rehabilitation uh, for pregnant women in Sweden, there was not one place anymore where you could, uh, as as a pregnant woman, stay to be supported by medical personnel while you were delivering the baby. You had to live in a psychic clinic. What is that? And they wanted to put syringes in me with all kinds of medicine, which hurts the baby. And I spoke to a woman who agreed to these kinds of medicine. Her baby was born in, and had to be put into a vacuum tube where he could not breathe perfectly. He was damaged for yeah. life from those medications yeah. that you protected Anton from. You were so brave. I just can't believe it, how brave you were. Yeah. And then we come to the point of delivery, where the baby came. Uh, me and Chris, we were planning to raise the baby. And uh, we had everything prepared for the child. We were with you in the delivery room. But your no, father? No, Christopher were not. Really. Your father? Your sister? Uh, Christopher weren't allowed by God to be nearby me because this was a child that I saved and I choose to save because... Uh, Christopher also. No, can okay, you shut up? And, and I... Christopher was actually by God's hand put away. He was not to, uh, allowed to be close to me because he was a part of the problem somehow. He's a part of the problem. He seems to not be able to protect. He's only able to protect his family. He's not able to protect my part of family. But there's obvious discussion in the, now and solutions in understanding the problem which has come to a problem where we are in this situation where we understand that obviously something has been wrong in my life for my whole life because they've been trying to kill me for my whole life and they have techniques that we did not knew of which only other people could know of. 
Anyway, so <clears throat> we went to the hospital. Your father, me, and your sister. We were there when you were delivering the baby so beautifully in a natural way. You had fabulous doctors around you. And you were so brave and so strong. It was such a beautiful delivery. It's one of the best moments of my life. Yeah, the doctor, the head doctor of the hospital was very proud of me. She had never seen anybody who didn't cry for her pregnancy. So, and so calm and so good at delivering babies. And breathing. And yeah. You did such a great work. Like a gymnast you were. <laughs> yeah, I was the top Pushing it all giver. so well, yeah. And out he came. Such a perfect boy. Yeah. Just... He was absolutely perfect. The first scream was perfect. It was a beautiful sound. And then he saw me and fell in love with me, as it is so supposed to say, you know. A ma mother and a, f and a son, they just feel the love, and it was love, it was natural love. Yeah. Yeah, it was so beautiful. You were breastfeeding him. Well, I did not breastfeed him. I did not have time to do that. Yeah. They took him away from me after just one and a half hour. Yeah. And that was one of the fastest hours in my life. But you have it all in memory, I guess. Yeah. It is all videoed in your memory. Well, it's all in video. I have already forgotten all of it. But I videoed it too. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing my secret camera thing and mm -hmm. it's all with us. But then, um, then the pirates came. Yeah. The lesbian pirates came in yeah. with the document telling that we have to give it over or they will take in police. They always use the police as a form to scare me of because I have been smoking marijuana, which is legal in many countries. But this is illegal in those countries I have, uh, can be quiet, where I have a, a, a membership of the country. And where citizenship. I, yeah, citizenship, and where my voice is to be heard. And so they use the police as some effort to scare me out of my situation, so I had to as I was just delivering, I had loss of blood, I could not do anything to protect my baby. And nobody was there to protect him. But we were there. My mother and father just gave up, as they always do. They are just some kind of intolerance. But they said to us that uh, they would fix it all and we have to come next day to the commune. And uh, they will sort it out ne the day after. But it was just a trick, obviously. It was a lie. It was a lie. Because now it's, now it's two and seven months after the pregnancy and I still cannot meet him alone without pedophiles being around. Oh, God. So... <clears throat> And then we were fighting the lawful way. We were trying to get through the law system to get the baby back. And they forbid me, as baby's grandmother, to... I have no right to have a court case on what they have done to me, too, yeah? And um, the only part that has right to get the baby is you and baby's father. And the baby's father is totally sick in his head. But uh, you have to say that he has been really trying to get the baby. So yeah, he, th his parents... He's, he owes me 3,000 euros and he still hasn't given me back the, that type of money. So if he cannot even repay money, so what kind of father would he be if he was supposed to be a father that would only give money and meet his child? 
they it's the Swedish system what they did to my fa mother and father as well they it's a computer that gets into the brain and that speaks in your head and makes you argue about money it's just like some kind of Soviet and Russian mind control. And capitalism Henning Vita talks about mind control it's so stupid it's nothing to do with life and it was just like why do I have to be pulled into this shithole? And so, so what we saw was that the law system was totally, totally conspiring with the pirates who were taking the baby. And yeah. your your uh, your lawyer, what was your experience with him? I feel that he is not educated. He's educated in those terms where he should be able to win a case, but he loses strength. He becomes, he's a robot actually, yeah. He's not allowed to win the case, so therefore he does not win the case. It's yeah, just yeah. like it it's is. Like the law is written yeah. also, so that the, the babies would stay in the property of the state. Yeah, they wanted the baby. I wanted the baby to be Latvian, they wanted the baby, they took the baby, and here we are now arguing about and the it. baby is with Swedes. Yeah. And that is because I asked them to put the baby with the Swedes. It could have been with Muslims, or it could yeah. have been with the Turks, it could have been with who, God knows whom, yeah? If I didn't deliberately ask to the, get the baby to the Swedes. And... Um, your lawyer, your lawyer never, never seemed to have. A He's quite bad, actually, in his duties. Uh, you see, there's so much that is so simple with life, and he seems to have it very difficult. Yeah. His his job is to pretend to help you. That's how yeah. bad. Yeah. It feels like it because he never gets. When he's standing up and wants to speak, he cannot actually. Does he? Does he? He do just, He's yeah, just, he just does the something as to. That's it. complicated for you. And your kin, your uh, tribe, uh, have no rights at all to uh, to to raise the baby. That was very very interesting. And grandmother has no rights by bloodline to replace you as caretaker, which is just for thousands of years has been the case yeah. in human history. Yeah. Were you not shocked about that? Uh, well, my grandmother, nobody could ever have argued with her. The grandmother her. of the child? Yeah. Well, well, with my grandmother, mother, grandmother. No, I'm talking mother. about Anton's grandmother. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Can you shut up a little bit? You're annoying me. Uh, as you can see, they want to prove that they can make my mother fall and that she isn't right and they want to teach her that lesson that she is not supposed to be a leader of her tribe and that somebody else can do it and raise the child which is so wrong. Yeah. Oh, and there is nobody. And else. then they wanted to su seduce me with that. that well, you can have another man. You can have many other children, as long as nobody's nearby your mother and father, because they believe in something. Really? Which, yeah. They said that to you. Yeah. God gracious. Freaking hell. I didn't know that. But I don't really want them to be apart anymore because they argue, they do messes. I don't want them to be uh, part of my world. I want to raise my children on my own because I feel there's been so much damage to my family. And obviously, nobody can damage her, his or her family on their own. 
it is somebody else that does it and enjoys it. Okay, so so your mother and father and other members of your tribe yeah. were not given any chance to to raise your son. Yeah. There was just people who Swedish social services picked up as fit to raise the child in the way that Swedish social services want to, the child to be raised. This was quite shocking, wasn't it? That they sort of, they are the ones to, to decide. It was a very shocking experience. Which is uh, against common law. How can they have even normal laws if they have these laws? They have obviously wanted to create me to a criminal person because they already tried to create me into a pedophile. They tried to create me and my mother into a pedophile relationship when I was 15 because my mother was protecting me so much and coming with such honest and believable comments that I should be protectful of myself, to not do wrong and to not do anything out of the, the air. And so they tried, to, the social services tried to convince the police that me and my mother had a lesbian affair going on, which was, it is just unacceptable what the social services in Sweden does. I had to go and speak to the police and say to them that I do not have a sexual relationship with my mother. God. Oh. Imagine to, to have that experience and when you're And these are the people we are have to contact because nobody is allowed to get a very well-paid job in Sweden. The salary, if you're 25 years old, your salary is 25,000. But as I lived in Sweden, I do not anymore wish to live there. Because when I was 17 and I had to work for 10,000 of crows, which didn't pay my duties, or I could not even pay for anything, you know. It was not, I had to work and stress, and I had to talk with the Swedish people about their private things. It's not what I want to do in my life. That's right. You're, you're needed by your kin. You're the icon now. The fertile young woman. Well, I was so loved when I was a child. And this love is still existing, but it has been destroyed a little bit by that, that my mother and father did not know how to react. And they listen to this brainwashing technique that the Swedish do have. Yeah. Let the gods be with us. Yeah. Anyway, to, to wrap it up, all this hard experience. So not, right now we're trying to get the baby back from Sweden. Yes. And my first uh, comeback to, into reality is that I have a strong position in the society now. My mother's relative is the defense minister in this country. So therefore I am protected by law. If something happens to him, this means that they are trying to attack the country. So now I am protected. Listen, you do not know what the laws are about. And so therefore I went to the hospital where I had to search for a technique how to try to convince a doctor that I am not crazy. But she obviously, as every other doctor, but she had silicone lips, so she is crazy by herself. She cannot look at herself in the mirror without thinking she's ugly. Uh, so... Obviously, this doctor was brainwashed as well, and I was put into the psychiatrist institute for one, for the sixth or seventh time in 
but this time it was nice. This time everybody was nice to me. They didn't try to kill me. They had a loving affection for me. They they strove. Yeah, they strove to help me. And the medicine was good, it was all new, and it was all made to be helpful, not to destroy the body. And, and what he says? And everything, and, 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 but still, the same thing happened. I went to a doctor where I asked for help. I wanted some relaxing medicine for sleep. I wanted some relaxing chemical medicine. I was telling her how I had been raped and how they described me. In Sweden, how it all happens and when it all had, goes on, and and she and it was as if they believed as if I was lying. Okay, let's get to the important thing. So now we're trying to get the baby back. So yeah. I could, I could raise it. Yeah, and what I've heard is that I need to have a concilium. I need to have at least twenty doctors. To tell me that I am healthy from schizophrenia because this doctor that I met now he told me that he never wanted to see me again but of course I have to subside to the effect yeah I have to subside when I say subside I have to give my I have to rest my energy into their affection. I don't know how to explain it. I have to rest it into into what they like. I have to compel them. I have to I have to be something of their object for them to understand me. And if they don't understand me, I have to go to the hospital and they do not help me. So the the point is that but my mother won't get back the child.